Hello friends, happy Thursday. Um, who is so excited that we have made it through the week? It's Thursday, it's time for your cookie demonstration tutorial on graduation cookies today. Um, so I'm sure if you're a cookier, you're getting tons of um, graduation orders and want to, to go over um, some with you today. So I've got some um, diplomas here we're going to decorate and some graduation caps that we're going to decorate. So um, I should pull these um, cutters. So these cutters are from Wilton. Um, there's a lot of different graduation caps that you can buy. I like this one because the tassel is not um, going to be easily broken off. So I have a couple other graduation caps that are not so good they the tassel hangs down um therefore you have a high probability of having a mishap of having that tassel break off so i love this one from wilton i think it came in a pack of three that you can get like at michael's and stuff like that with a diploma and i like the diploma because it's a little bit smaller um and um it fits like in a smaller a smaller bag but it's really cute and you can just personalize the colors um that you want for whatever graduation um that you are making these for so whether it's like a tennessee and you want orange today we're gonna do purple so this is for um i live in spring hill tennessee which is just outside nashville um and this is for spring hill college which is in Alabama. It's not even in Tennessee. Um, but that is why um, I just had the purple on hand and was doing a graduation. So we're going with purple today. So most of the time you want to do black or like this one is just a generic good graduation one with your diploma in white um, and your black and the gold. So I'm not sure what color I'm going to use for these um, um, diplomas today for the ribbon. But um, I have some yellow that we can use for gold. Or um, I might just use black so because I'm going to do purple for the um, outline. So first we're going to outline the diploma. And um, I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So we're going to do it white, just like this one here. And I have my, so I'm going a little tipless today um, with my outline. So this is outline icing. It is like a toothpaste consistency. This is what your icing should be after you mix it in the mixer. Um, and just for anyone asking for recipes, I don't have any recipes, um, right now. They will be coming in my online course that should be launching very, very soon. So I am wrapping up doing filming and videos and stuff for that. And so I'm hoping to fingers crossed to get it out to you. Um, definitely this summer so hopefully i'm shooting for june so um stay in the loop with that you can join my um, email list from my website to stay in the loop um, if you want to know when that is coming and be the first to know so and that will have all my recipes it'll have pdfs with the recipe with the sugar cookie recipe with the royal icing recipe um, and tons of other stuff and videos and tutorials and everything else um, so this is your outline icing this is what it is after you've mixed it in the mixer it is a toothpaste consistency so you want it to be stiff you don't want it to be too stiff where your lines break but you want it to be stiff so that it doesn't fall off the edges of your cookie. So this kind of acts as a dam um, around your cookie to keep your blood icing, which is what's in this bag. Um, it keeps that from overflowing. So this is like maple syrup consistency. Um, so you are going to use your outline first, and then you're going to fill it all in with your flood icing. A lot of people call this fill icing or flood icing. So that's what we are going to do today. So um, we are going to outline first with our outline consistency. So I'm not gonna do the two little ribbons here because as you can see on this cookie, we just left them so it looks like a diploma. So there's many ways um, that you can do it. So I'm going to start up here. I always like to do a downward motion first before. And so notice how much I'm pulling up, moving around the cookie and just telling my icing where to go. So see how far up? Especially when you're going around curves because circles are hard, people. They're hard, they're challenging. 
So we have our outline here. And then what I'm gonna do is I, anytime your icing gets this like crusty stuff on the end, just have a wet paper towel by you and just wipe that off. It's always nice to have. Always have one just kind of right beside me, just in the wings. Um, so now I'm gonna flood. Then so I like to go around the outside first and then work my way in. So it's kind of a personal preference, but that's just way, that way I get all the way to the edge. And then I'm gonna use my scrub. I got my fancy scrub today. I couldn't find my other ones that, um, my sweet sugar roll ones I like the most. This one is kind of, um, it's got these charms on it, so it's a little loud. But um, that's what we're using today. So a scribe is great for to mix any mess ups. It helps you move your icing around and just helps you to get any boo-boos that you might get. So what you can do after that is just kind of shake it and give a little shake shake here. Um, I did not make cookies ahead of time. Um, I did do the graduation cap like literally like 10 minutes before I jumped on here. So we'll see how much it's dried, but we are gonna set this aside and we're gonna grab the graduation cap and we're gonna do the top part. Aren't these called uh, mortar boards, I think? Which is like the weirdest name. I'm sure it has like some kind of significant name um, or whatever, but I always just call them graduation caps because that's just what they are to me. So with your graduation cap, you are going to outline the top here. And so with this type of cutter that I have, I do not go exactly on this line, um, just because of the way this one is shaped. Um, so I'm just gonna start here at the corner. And again, this is my outline. I'm using a tip on this one. This is an outline icing. This is a number two tip. Um, it's a Wilton number two, so that's really like a, two and a half almost, which is what I usually use to outline. So this is a, that's a two. I have all my extra icing sitting over here. This is a two and a half. So that's what I prefer is a two and a half versus the two here, but a two will work. If that's all you have on hand, no problem. So with this graduation cap, I'm gonna do, like I said, just this top portion. I'm gonna put a dot right here in the middle where I want my points to come to. So again, like I said, I don't really follow exactly along the line, um, but I'm just gonna follow that point. And then I'm gonna do a point up here. And I'm just gonna draw my line up there. And pull it down. Okay, so two options here. You can just go ahead and flood this. Um, I keep wanting to call it a square, but it's not a square. This triangle, I guess it's technically a triangle, or you can go ahead and outline this bottom part, and then you're just gonna flood. You're only gonna flood one portion of it because you wanna have this divided um, and to show dimension for your cookie. So we'll go ahead and divide this now and Oh, look at that. Did you, did you see that? It just jumped out of there. So I'm just gonna take my scribe, and this is one that's great for like a boo-boo stick. I need my one that has the flat end. It's an, oh. Here's one. Um, it's got the flat end, and so I can just use that to move. Okay, so I'm just gonna do my line again. If that happens, if you get an air bubble, no big deal. So here I'm going to just connect it here. Now I'm gonna use a white tassel um, for this set. So I'll do white in the middle and have the white down here. So we'll do that at the end. So now I'm gonna flood um, this portion here. So this icing um, is a couple days old. It's been in the fridge. And you can see it's kind of separated a little bit. So one thing that you can do is you can, I have these fancy new clips. I don't have one with me. Um, here's what you can do. Just take a paper towel and just cover the end. And then I already have the other end is secure with a clip from Ikea. So I'm just gonna move this around with my hand, just kind of massage it. I've got the end with the paper towel so it's not going anywhere. I've got it 
I've got it, I'm pinching it so it can't come out the other end. And I'm, I don't wanna touch it with my hand. So, now that it's like moved around a little bit, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit out and make sure it's the right color. So I'm going to just fill it in like so. All right. And again, I go work from the outside in. And so you can see it's got some lines just because it wasn't all the way together, but you can just use your scribe and most of those are gonna disappear, like you're just gonna mix them in. So if you do start to have that a lot and it bothers you, just take your icing, pour it back into a bowl, mix it up, and then rebag it. So <clears throat> no big deal there. So you can see that most of them have disappeared. Just wanna make sure I don't go over the edge there. So you're going to, um, normally what you're going to do is you're going to let this dry for about eight hours and then you're going to set it in front of a fan or you're going to let it, set it in front of a fan, let it dry for eight hours and then come back and do the rest. So let me go put this in front of the fan and grab the other one I have. All right, so we have this one. We'll come back to it. But let's go ahead and do this diploma and show you how we're gonna decorate this. So as you saw, I just decorated this one. I didn't do one ahead of time because um, I thought, well, we'll just wing it and just go for it. So um, I'm gonna do, like I said, since we have the purple cap and gowns, instead of the black, like on this one, we're gonna do purple. Um, so I'm gonna show you how we do these lines. So these are from um, Sweet Sugar Bell, has a tutorial on these and shows how to make these fun, easy diplomas um, on her website. So you can go and see those detailed out. But I'm gonna show you quickly here how we did it. And I just kind of follow the lines of how it was done before. And I'm using outline icing to achieve this. And I'm just um, gonna leave a space for the bow, for the ribbon there. Haven't decided what color I'm gonna do yet. But you're just using your outline icing, which is your toothpaste consistency to make it. So there you go. I think we might just do, goodness, should we just do black? And do a black, but I think we might do that. So I'm gonna do the tassel in white. Um, and a little trick, if you're icing, um, I used this yesterday and just threw it in the fridge. So it's all dried at the end. So you just use your um, scribe, stick it in the bottom to get you're right, and this one, you know, actually, this is a 1.5, and that's a little smaller than I want. So this is more like a two. So I'm gonna grab a two tip for my trusty little box here. And let's see. Um, I have a two here, that's a two. And this is what I like about using tips is that you can easily exchange your chip sizes, especially with black, because you're gonna change it all the time. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm just gonna do my line, and this is outline icing again. And I'm just gonna make my little ribbon. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And if it isn't, then just, you have other ones to do. So there you go. So there's our fun little diploma. He will be done. We'll set him in front of a fan to dry for eight hours. Um, and now we will move on to our um, graduation cap. So graduation cap, we're gonna finish off the bottom and we are going to add the tassel. So first let's finish this part here the bottom piece of the graduation cap. 
And so that was my outline icing. Now I'm going to use my flood icing to fill in. Um, so you can see it took just, I mean, literally 10 minutes before I went live. I put this in front of the fan and did it quickly. And I think it's going to stay the way it's supposed to. And show, just it just shows that dimension, just shows. Now, if you wanted to, if you were like strapped for time and you're like, I got to get these cookies out, I don't have time. You could make the whole thing, ice the whole thing purple, and then just draw a line where you would, where you would have this triangle for the hat. Um, but if you have the time, do it because it just makes it look so much nicer. So for the tassel, um, I am going to add, and you would let this dry for a while if you were doing this for real. So if you're doing it for real, remember saying that as a kid, are you for real? Um, so I'm just going to um, take my outline icing and I'm just making a, a, um, a circle here and I'm going to wipe that off. And I'm just going to smooth it out. And then I have icing all over my hands now. And then I'm going to draw kind of like a dot there, more like an oval. And then I'm going to draw my little line for the tassel. And then down here, I'm just going to add my fun pieces of the tassel. What are these? The fringes. Maybe the fringes? That sounds right. So however you want to do that. You could fill it in if you want, but I think that looks fine. Now normally what's gonna, what would happen is when this dries, this purple is going to bleed into the white. Um, do I like that? No. That's why I would let it dry. So see what I did there? I just kind of moved it, touched it up, Normally, I would let this dry for eight hours. So just be mindful of that. But we're in a hurry. So that's what we're going to do. So there is your mortarboard and your diploma for your graduation. So all set and ready to go. So um, let me see if you guys have any questions about um, anything. I'm just running through here. Ask them away. I'm just going to scroll up and see if I see any. Um, I will have this posted for 24 hours and then you can go back and watch it. Um, it will be, it will live on my Facebook page, um, for you guys. So where do I buy my cookie cutters? So again, these are from Wilton. I buy most of my cutters from 3d printed cutters nowadays. Anytime I'm in Target or Michaels or Walmart, I always look um, and their seasonal section to see what kind of cutters they have because I mean you just can never have enough I guess I feel like um, But these are from Wilton. They're ones I just picked up. They came three to a pack They came with the graduation hat and the diploma and something else. I have no idea what, what the third one was um, But it's always nice just to always have um, Cutter like just different cutters because you just never know like I said I have another graduation cap that has a, a tassel that hangs down um, The square like it's more triangle and it's you know more realistic looking But that tassel will just pop off like super super easy So I don't like to use it. So I like this one the best and you see how like I didn't even follow the lines um, And I'm totally okay with that personal preference um, But that's just what like I'm using them once a year I do use this one a lot just because I do a lot of graduations but um, but yeah so it's fun so how far in advance do you start making your cookies before the due date so because I am a busy mom with three kids and a husband my kids are nine seven and four I um, do a little not a little bit I do a lot each day so and I do not like to press and I'm not one of those that works well under pressure um, and that's just my personality. So I bake everything on Sundays and, um, I will just bake it the day that I bake. I don't do anything else with the cookies. Like I bake them, get them. I do all my baking in one day, one afternoon and, um, get them ready for the week. And then I put them in airtight containers. So I'll show you the containers that I use. I use these, excuse this mess here. 
Um, but I use these airtight containers. These are all like extra cookies that I've had um, that I've made that are like, see the like end of the dough and stuff like that. So extra ones, um, just in case if I mess up something, I have extras. But um, I use these airtight containers that work great. They are rubber made and they will keep your cookies really soft. So I try, I always test them to see if they're still soft by pushing on the sides or you can kind of flip them over and see if they're um, still soft. So my cookies are um, slightly undercooked. So that's just how I like them. That's how I don't like to have any brown edges around the, um, around the edge. And so you can kind of see on the back of this one how it is a little bit undercooked um, here and there. So those are just how I like to have my cookies. So I can still tell and squeeze the little sides that they're still soft. So I found some Easter ones last night that someone ordered and didn't pick up and they are still soft. They've been in a bag. They're not heat sealed, um, but they've just been in a bag. And my husband wanted, to, he was like, do you got any extra cookies last night, of course? And, um, and I found some that were Easter and, um, they were still good. So he ate like all four of them. So, um, they last, I usually tell people they last for seven to 14 days. Um, but they last longer than that. I feel like, so once you have the icing, the icing, there's something about that Royal icing that kind of just, um, keeps your moisture and keeps your cookie moist. I know I hate that word, everybody hates that word, but it just kind of keeps your cookie moist and fresh and still good. So, um, yes. How did I get into this? So I started by making cookies or cakes. I took a cake decorating class from Michael's Craft Store um, almost 10 years ago, probably 10 years ago, um, this summer. And I, um, did a few cakes here and there. I really enjoyed the class. I love the class, um, and loved, I've always loved like baking and always making cakes and stuff, um, and desserts in my parents' kitchen and everything growing up. And then I, um, after my son was born, he's almost 10. When he was about six months old, we went to a birthday party and it was a farm theme and they had the most adorable, um, farm cookies, iced cookies that were in the shape of like a barn and a horse and a cow and a pig. And I was like, oh my goodness, these are so cute. I could totally make these. It's a lot of the same techniques I learned with cake decorating. Um, so I went home, got some cutters. It was in the fall. So I got some pumpkins and such and started practicing. And I started looking up online classes and not classes, videos of how to make your icing and things like that. And I, um, just started playing around with it and just kind of fell in love with cookies. And so I am not an artist, um, by trade at all. Like I am terrible at art. I keep waiting for my high school art teacher to, um, compliment my cookies, but <laughs> no, she probably, I'm sure has other things, but I was never good at art and never, and I can't draw a stick person. You should see, see my like sketches are, I'm going to see if I have any sketches here. My sketches are terrible. I had some last night that I came across. Um, you would laugh at like my handwriting is awful. So, um, you don't have to be good at that and you don't have to be an artist. Um, two things that you need are patience and a steady hand. Um, I painted my kids' rooms when they were baby or before, like, they were born and stuff. And I noticed that I did, um, could, like, cut in, you know, like, when you cut in um, where you have to, like, tape and you're, like, trying to cut in around the molding and such. Um, I didn't have to cut or I didn't have to use tape. Like, I could just, you know, like, you use tape to tape it off so you don't get on the edge. Love my Easter ribbon. Um, I just could cut in and just had a really steady hand. So, um I don't know what that's from, but it just helped um, having a steady hand. And then just practice. So watch videos. I'm getting ready, like I said, to, to launch. I'm super, super, super excited to launch this online course. It's going to be amazing. And it will have all the videos and tutorials that you need. Things that I learned um, from other people that were out there. Things that I picked up from different things that will be um, so helpful if you're starting out this journey, if you're just, um, starting out or you want to start and you want to, um, stay home with your babies. That was one thing is my husband and I knew like I wanted to stay home with our kids when we had them. And like I said, I started this when my son was about six months old and I wasn't as busy and I started out very, very slow, like taking one or two orders here and there for family and, and things like that. And I just started making them 
like especially like around holidays and then like taking them to parties taking them to my neighbor's house taking them to a bible study taking them to um different things and people would say oh wow these are great did you make these yes i made these oh i sell them too like here's my card here's what i do um so definitely um something to look into keep them you know stay on me about my online course sign up for um my mailing list there so that you can get firsthand knowledge of when that's coming out and I'm super super excited like I said it'll have everything you need to know um your basics 101 on how to decorate cookies um so how long do you keep your royal icing so over here I have some royal icing so this is all my work I started doing this tray I know that sippy cup right um Brady with the um Frosted Cookery start, does this and has all of her icing on a tray. And I feel like that's kind of good because then I don't have like icing dripped like everywhere all over my counter. So it's a less cleanup at night when I get done. Um, so this is a, um, I got these from the Dollar Tree for a dollar and um, they work really great. I use them for my classes and such, but they work really well. So I just have a paper towel down here so I can catch any like drippings. But um, a lot of times like I'll go through and see like this one, um, it started to separate. I used this one this week. I probably won't be using this color again. So I'll go ahead and wash it and get rid of it and things like that, that like ones that I know that like I've had um, for about a week. So your icing that will last in a container like this, this is, um, got the plastic wrap on the top the clean wrap and it will stay for like two weeks in your fridge so just make sure that it's in it doesn't have to be airtight but just make sure you have like a saran wrap clean wrap something or it'll start to get crusty around the edges and you don't want that in your icing so i just keep it in this um until i'm ready to use it and then i just work from it so um i keep it in my fridge you don't have to keep it in your fridge um but I just do, just, I don't know. I just don't want to like leave it on the counter all the time. So um, have I tried a glaze? So the farm cookies that I was talking about were, they were a glaze. I'm not sure how they were done per se. I mean, it's so long ago. And, but the, the bakery that did it, it was a shop that did it, um, probably dipped the cookies it looked like. And so it had like a glaze that covered so it covered like the entire part of it. I had someone once that um, was allergic to eggs and wanted some of my cookies. And so I looked up some recipes. This is a long time ago. I did this about seven years ago, probably six years ago. Um, and I did a glaze and I, instead of using the meringue powder with your, royal, with your um, powdered sugar, is I used powdered sugar and corn syrup and water. Um, but here's the problem with that. So it's extremely hard to work with because it's so stiff like talk about hand cramps awful and it doesn't harden so what makes your royal icing harden is the meringue powder um if you don't have the meringue powder it's not going to harden and you're not going to be able to stack your cookies and your designs are not going to be the same um if you're using like a glaze so there might be something else on the market now um of like a different type of glaze, um, not on the market, but like different recipes that have a glaze. If you have like an egg allergy and such, um, because meringue is made with egg whites. So, um, but that was my experience with it a long time ago. Um, when am I going to have other classes? I am hoping so. I'm going to do a mom and me class. I just talked to Matilda Jane, um, rep that we are doing a class at the beginning of June, June, I think it's the 4th. Um, and it's going to be a mom and me class, which will be super exciting. We're going to do some designs that will be similar to their newest um, launch that they just did for the spring and summer. Um, I haven't even had a chance to look at them. So, but I always know like Matilda Jane has these bright, beautiful colors that I love. So um, that will be coming a mom and me class that will be coming. And then, um, and I'm not sure on the location yet, but um, the other... Um, adult class i'm hoping to do one in june so which will be great for like teachers and stuff like that so be on the lookout um for that so i should be posting one um fairly soon for for then so how do i store my cookies if you bake before you're ready to decorate um like i said in these airtight containers they are wonderful if you want um 
So this is what they are. They're wonderful. I got these at, like, Kroger has them. You can see they're made by Rubbermaid. Kroger has them. Um, oh, my goodness. Target. Um, see all my colors? I kind of went a little crazy on airbrush colors the other day. Um, they are wonderful. It keeps them airtight, and it keeps them soft in here. Um, and then I use my trays. I bake on, or I don't bake on them. I just use them to decorate on. And then they stay on that with a covered um, um, piece after they have their first layer of icing after they've been flooded. And then I work from them until I'm ready to package them. So how do you balance personal life along with the cookie shop? Man, it is hard. It is a constant struggle. Um, I am constantly trying to juggle kids and family life and um, cookies. So um, I just kind of know that like around 13 to 18 dozen is kind of my max for the week or it's kind of my comfort zone for the week. And that means that I can um, work on cookies like usually like 11 to 3 or 11 to 4 until my kids my big kids my boys get home from school so um a lot of just trial and error of just knowing like what I can handle how fast I can go like how fast a design will take me um sometimes if you have a, a set that has more colors it takes longer so you just kind of have to like budget your time but definitely start off slow and just start off taking a couple orders here and there and just kind of know like how much you can take um but like I said it's a constant struggle of um and I have a problem it's called and I'm sure there's a name for it but it's called um I take on too much and um and think that I can do more than I can really do and so um I'm sure there's a name for that <laughs> but um but yeah so a lot of times I'm like oh yeah I can do all these orders and do all of this and then come to find out like oh my gosh regretting taking on so much and realizing that I've stretched myself too thin so um so yay she left her teacher cookies that's awesome so teacher appreciation um was this week I'm <laughs> it's so funny I hope I had some extras some um ones I use for pictures this week that I was going to send with my kids. Um, but I might sell those because I've had a lot of people want some extra teacher ones. So, um, but I do have some of the extra, like the latte apple combos that I think I'm going to send with my kids tomorrow to school. So, um, the life of a cookie or, you know, like you're sitting here buying chocolate chip cookies for other people. <laughs> It's so funny, but um, great questions, you guys. If you ever, ever, ever have questions, please don't hesitate to um, slip me a DM or ask me on Instagram. Would love to answer them for you. Look at that mess. It's just crazy. Paper towels. Somebody I heard the other day that does not use paper towels at all in their house, and I just kind of gasped, and I went, <gasps> like, I should buy stock and bounty because I use paper towels all the time. I can't live without them. So... Um, or I would be doing a lot of laundry, which I have enough of that as it is. So balance, um, you know, it's just a work in progress, like of trying to figure out what I can do and what I can't. Um, I'm hoping to have like an intern this summer. Um, I've got a gal that wants to, that's actually really talented and, and good at cookies. And so I'm hoping to bring her in to, to, um, help me doing packaging and help me doing, um, like making cookies, making the dough, rolling out, stuff like that, that she can help me. Sometimes I'm like, I just need somebody to take cookies in and out of the oven would be helpful. So, um, fun, 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 exciting things coming for the shop. Um, I am completely booked for um, May, but I'm hoping, but I think I have a few spots left in June, like at the end of June, not very many, um, but I'm really focused on doing this, this online course, guys, because it's just going to be awesome, and I want it to be, um, I'm trying not to, to get wrapped up in it being perfect, but I really want it to be great and everything that I would have wanted when I first started out and everything that I was looking for when I first started out. So be excited about that. It's coming, coming soon. And um, yeah, I'm excited. So stay tuned. Subscribe to my website. You can go on my summersweetshop.com and subscribe there. Or um, if you can't find that, just send me your email and I'll get you on there. We'll get it on there. So 
super excited. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I look forward to next Thursday. Next Thursday, I might have a change because it's my daughter's last day of school. So we may just be more um, closer to three o'clock. But send me your ideas of what you want to see. I think we might do coloring icing and how to color it um, in the different bowls. I've got these great airbrushes back. We might do have we done an airbrush? I think, I can't remember if I did an airbrush. I think I did an airbrush tutorial last week. I might do a projector one. I don't know. Send me what you want to see and we will get it in the works and we'll make it happen. So, um, thanks so much guys. Oh, do you have any suggestions on what tip I should use when learning how to write on cookies? I would go, um, with a number two tip or a number or a two and a half. So this is a number two. This is an old tip from, um, Wilton, so I wouldn't use a Wilton one. I would use, make sure it's a PME. You cannot see this at all, but it is a PME. Let's see if I tap it. No, nothing. It's a, you can't even see, but it's a PME too. Oh, I can kind of see it there. It's a PME too, and I would use that or um, a number two or a one and a half. I wouldn't go bigger than a two and a half. This is a two and a half. I wouldn't probably use that. That's going to be a little bit too big. Um, I think a one and a half is going to be too big. So I would stick with a two tip. Um, and you can get those. Grinderfully Delicious has those. And um, TMP, um, Truly Mad Plastics has them um, and other places. So definitely start with a number two um, and then just practice it. Look, I just got red everywhere. That's awesome. That's why I like to tie them at the end. I don't have these tied or use these little clips that are great. So anyways, send me your questions, send me your suggestions, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Bye guys.